guys, good morning, God bless. Welcome back to my channel. I am Charlene and I want to talk to you guys about when is the best time to read your Bible? Well, my personal opinion is anytime. <laughs> no tricks over here. Listen, I am a stay-at-home mom. I have a almost 11-month-old. I have a 4-year-old. And I have a 14-year-old that stays in the home with me 24-7. And then on the weekends, we get the boys. Big family. I get it. If don't anybody else understands, definitely me. I understand as... Well, actually, I've been in almost every season in my existence, in my life. I've been the single mom while it was just me and Ariana, and I made time for God and read my Bible. I've been the college student where I made time to read my Bible. I've been the teenager where I made time to read my Bible. I really want to stress this importance because a lot of the false teachings and uh, the false and inappropriate conversations involving around Christianity and Christ and God, a lot of it stems from poor information or lack of knowledge or simply the victims aren't reading. They aren't reading God's word. Reading God's word will eliminate a lot of the foolery. Trust and believe me, I know as a average Joe, like I said, as a teenager, as a single mom, as a married woman, as a married woman with kids, as a pastor's wife, trust me, read your Bible. God is gracious. I need y'all to understand something. In the Bible, as early as possible, people wrote things down to share and pass it along. And even before people even had the idea of understanding of writing things down, God, when Moses went up on the mount and he ministered to Moses and he gave Moses those commands, he said, get that tablet, write it down. Write down this because I want you to remember. I want you to be able to come back to this because God knew us. He created us. He knew every flaw, every issue, every mishap, every shortcoming. Even in the case of Moses, he did not want to speak because he had a stuttering problem. He, he didn't speak well. But God said, I got this. He already knows what we need. He knows what help we have. He knows how to use people and to group people. And the concept of studying your word and reading your word is no different. God has used a lot of individuals to get to a point where we have publishers, we have different translations, we have conveniency, you have compact Bibles, pocket Bibles, medium-sized Bible, pew Bibles, you have the desk Bible, you have the family size Bible. There is no excuse. We're living in a day and age where the Bible is literally everywhere. You have it on your phone, you can put it on your computer, you can put it on your iPad, your tablet. And we have the nerve to say we don't have time or um, we're too busy or um, I can't. There is no excuse, y'all. There's individuals right now who are homeless and have pocket-sized Bibles or regular-sized Bibles. I know someone in particular that was homeless and they had a regular, matter of fact, they have the, uh, what do you call it, the Life Application Study Bible, KJV, and made sure they kept it and, and carried it with them wherever they went when God had them on the street had the Bible. When they were able to get into a hotel, had a Bible. When they were able to be in a home or stay with a family member, had that Bible. And we're talking about the big kahula, the, the large print. 
and Life Application Bible. We have no excuse. If someone who doesn't even have a home understand that all they have and all that they need is here, what in the world is our excuse? We come home. God has given us all that we can imagine. We have beautiful families. We have a home. We have a car. We have a job. You have what you need or at least what you wanted as well. Like God has been really gracious to us. And a lot of us can attest that his favor is definitely not fair, but we reap the benefits of having a good, merciful, gracious God. And even this, I thought about this too, just now. The gap between Malachi and Matthew and how God wasn't speaking or using anyone. And even in this era, you know, it was a matter of he said, she said, God, the Holy Spirit using people to remember things and bring things along. And if you were privileged enough, you were able to get a Bible. Y'all, how many times and how many YouTubers or videos have you seen where people internationally desire to have a Bible? They don't have a means for a Bible or they don't have the type of Bibles we have. We are so spoiled and we take this for granted. You got breath in your body. You can see, you can hear, you can touch. You need to make time to read your Bible. However, um, an individual I follow, and some of you guys said you follow her too, is Cat Woods. And one thing that I always can guarantee to get encouraged about is making time for God. She works, she has kids, she's married, and she spends a lot of her time, almost probably most of her free time, reading her word. And that's amazing. She's even got time to write out the Bible and read the Bible and study the Bible and make videos. Even for myself, I don't mean to toot my own horn, please don't take it like that. But y'all, I have an extremely, extremely busy life. Again, my husband has a church and not only does he have his own church, but he ministers and pastors elsewhere. Um, he works. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have these kids. Um, I tend and do things for my siblings, um, for my mom who doesn't drive and is older. I'm all over the place during the week. Um, and the week is, it's even worse. But y'all, if you got a moment, you can read. One thing that's really, uh, disturbing to me is that we can say we don't have time to read the Bible, but we always got time for our phones. And that is the most saddest thing ever. Even talking to myself, there's been moments and times where I'm scrolling on my phone 30, 40 minutes, and it's like, you could have been reading. And I feel so guilty and so ashamed, but there's God's grace. And then you repent, obviously, because this is a repenting moment where you could have put God first. You could have invested your time into him, but you chose your phone and social media, which is why I talk to you guys a lot about fasting from social media. And I've gotten so much better. And I remember when I went them days and weeks at a time without, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> this cough just won't go nowhere, um, without, you know, logging in and stuff. And I got so much, as a matter of fact, I started posting about the Bible tracking app around that time. And I was like, I can get so much reading done and not speed reading and not rushing, but just some genuine study, hardcore, concrete reading done. And it's just like, wow, God, you think about all the moments and times that you wasted when you're at the doctor's office waiting. Have a pocket size. Matter of fact, that um, was laid on my heart too. And Lord, please forgive me because I just remembered that I forgot all over again. There was a time where I had a Bible in my car. I had uh, one that would fit in my purse. Um, we, we just don't have any excuse, y'all. And I'm speaking even for myself. I'm like, oh, I should have a Bible in this car. I should have a Bible that stays in this car and it's well kept. And it's like, Lord, what am I doing? But don't worry. Today, I'm going to, I got what, three different Bible cases. I got one Bible that I think I can just leave in the car. Then I got one in the living room. I used to have one behind my bed. Now, don't get me wrong. Y'all know I read the Bible. But it just I just think about those moments in between where it's like you having a rough day where you don't get out, out of bed as fast. Your Bible's right there. Um, you're in the living room. You never make it in here. Your Bible's right there. 
uh, maybe somewhere in the kitchen or the dining area, a Bible is right there. Like, no excuse in this house. Y'all know we have Bibles everywhere. And I just got over this thing where I was so tedious about particular Bibles and specific Bibles. But God has been dealing with me like, look, either you want to spend time with me or not. And it shouldn't matter what color it is. No, the only thing that I say to be careful about is what print you buy. Because once you get it, then it's like, oh, I can't use it. And that is a valid excuse to say, well, this Bible print is too small. Because if you can't read, you can't read. And Lord knows when you get to a certain age, you don't want to damage your eyes. But even for the young people, I remember um, having an exhortation at church. And I was speaking to them. And I said, we have no excuse, y'all. None. We have our phones. I tell my daughter all the time, you can get that app sent to your phone, 8 a.m. I mean, excuse me, the verse sent to your uh, phone right before 8 a.m., right before you start school or when you get up in the morning. Spend time with God. Put him first is the easiest thing. Not because so much of something's wrong with us, because at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to is selfishness. Like, I got better things to do. And even if you don't directly say that, your actions lead towards that thought. But even in reference of prioritizing, like our favorite show, record it, download it, make a notification, a reminder. Um, we want to have our personal care day. Reminder, write it down, make appointments, save money. Like we know how to prioritize. It's in our nature to prioritize. As parents, we prioritize our kids and our, and as a wife, you prioritize your husband and your marriage. Um, as a working woman, you prioritize your work. You know, we, that's in our nature to do. So we have the capability and the means to do it. We just, some, some of us just got to fight a little harder. I share with y'all that I have a hard time, you know, writing things down, having a planner, being organized, but I told God, please help me going into the new year because um, whom much is given, much is required. And that's the season I'm in now where God is blessing me. He's giving to me. He's pouring into me. He's growing my ministry. And it's like, okay, God, you know, what now? And it's like, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And how am I going to keep up with all these things if I don't get organized? There's a faith planner. People are into planning and they, they go hard in planning, y'all. The planning community is on point. I'll be like, yes, I'll be watching them and I ain't even got a planner <laughs> because it's so motivating and so encouraging to see the productivity. And guess what? There's a faith planner or you can create a faith planner. I showed you guys how I turned my regular planner. I don't know where it is. I think it's over there right now into a prayer planner slash reading, Bible reading. Like I got everything in there, Bible reading, prayer, um, the ministry, YouTube, everything is all in one. I have no excuse. None. I don't have any. Like, um, I've been talking to you guys about spending and not, you know, overdoing it and really saving and stuff. And I just made up my mind. I kept hearing, you got what you need. You got what you need. Um, and that was right after, you know, I, I told you I had the feeling or something was just telling me, like, make room. And Lord and behold, I had people hit me up, giving me Bibles. Um, companies were sending me stationery to review. And it's like, God, you are building and you are working, but I need to be obedient too. So I've been cleaning and I've been weaving out stuff and um, giving things away and donating things. And I'm trying to get organized. Um, you'll see the video later about my planner. Like I got a, a little cheap dollar planner, like, one of the things about studying James, faith without works is dead. And that means that I can believe that God will help me to do this. And I can also take action. Like some people say, get out of God's way or don't overstep. And it's like, uh, God gave us common sense. We have wisdom. And we understand that some things take work and dedication. And what I like to look or how I like to view it is if you are getting in God's way, or if something is amiss, he would make you aware of that, or it's a lesson learned and you learn, or you can look at it as Lord, I'm going to take this step with faith. And God usually comes through and helps you take two more, three more steps and make ways for you, open doors, make availability and means for you. Trust me, I am a huge Believer that God definitely will take care of you as a stay-at-home mom who does not work and a one-income home, 
Y'all, even like right now, it is super tight, super duper tight. And normally, just last year around this time, it's like, oh, you got Christmas, you got gifts, you got this, you got that. But y'all, <laughs> God is a good guy. He will provide and supply all your needs. You just have to put him first. Believe in him, listen to him, honor him, obey him, live as if he is in you, which if you confess to believe, then you do house the Holy Spirit. So live accordingly. Read your Bible. Pick up God's word on today. Y'all, don't be scared. Don't be frightened. Pray. If there's any underlining issue, whether it's, like I said, print size or um, translation issues or understanding, pray. Ask God to help you. But the answer is simply not not to read you understand pick up your bible read i absolutely love you guys god bless take care bye